This is a Ferrari 458 and it's pretty bloody glorious. It also happens to feature one of the final naturally aspirated V8 engines Ferrari ever produced. Now stick around because we're going to give you a bit of a different perspective on this car from what you might have seen today because we're going to disclose all the common problems, all the things that tend to go wrong. That way if you're in the market for one you know exactly what to look for. If not and you're just a total car nut like us then watch along anyway and you can impress your friends with your newfound knowledge. Either way let's go. So let's kick off with what is a wee bit of a controversial issue and that is the fact that these cars love to catch fire. Now why did that happen? Well Ferrari were a wee bit hush hush back in 2010 as to why your new supercar was bursting into flames. The story that seemed to stick was it was the adhesive that was in the rear wheel arches that would cause it. In other words the glue would get too hot and then spontaneously combust. There's one theory but another is that if you start to look into this problem, you'll find that the fire always seems to originate on the rear left-hand quarter. What is behind the rear left-hand quarter, I hear you ask? Well, it's the fuel system purge. I know, that could cause it as well, surely. Now, on early 2010 Ferrari 458s, what you found was that that system fed directly into the engine bay. On later cars, or cars that had, had the recall carried out, they basically fitted a bit of pipework so that it would purge to the wheel well, which seems a fair bit more sensible, and certainly stopped that from happening. So on these earlier cars, I'm talking about the 2010, 2011s, we've seen some gearbox problems. Now it was an early dual clutch transmission, so problems were always going to raise their head. We were always going to see teething issues. Now interestingly, the gearbox in this car was actually not made by Ferrari. It was made by a company called Getrag, a massive German gearbox manufacturer. Now interestingly, that gearbox was also shared with the Mercedes SLS AMG, which is really quite interesting because if you've ever driven an early one of them, the gear changes were laughably slow, whereas in this, they've always been really crisp and sharp. Now, the reason behind that, Mercedes tuned it to be nice and comfortable, and they kind of favored the reliability aspect over the performance aspect, which as you would expect, Ferrari were going for. So what went wrong with them? Well, as I say, 2010, 2011, these gearboxes seemed to suffer a lot of electronic issues rather than mechanical. So it was things like controllers, wiring and so on that would tend to have the problems. Now the issue was they weren't repairing any of these gearboxes back in 2010. Instead, what Ferrari would do is just swap the entire gearbox out. That may be why the one that you're looking at has got a brand new gearbox fitted all those years ago. Now in 2011, Getrag actually revised the design completely of these gearboxes and that's why 2011 onwards seems to be a wee bit more reliable. Now somewhere around that 2013-2014 point, that's where Getrag started to train the local Ferrari technicians and supply parts to repair these gearboxes. That meant they could be fixed at a fraction of the cost of replacing the entire thing, which was good news for owners. Here's an important consideration. If you're the type of person who likes to kidnap other people and put them in your boot or trunk, something you need to know about on the 458. Granted, it's probably not your first choice of car to do that with. However, if you need to make do, you're caught in a pinch, something you should know about. So on the earlier cars once again, and through to about midway through production, what you found was there was a recall wherein this front boot or trunk couldn't be opened from the inside, which is ideal if you want to kidnap people, not ideal for meeting American regulations. So there's a recall issued, Make sure that's been carried out. So next up, here are a few things you absolutely need to check for, but before we get to them, a quick favor ask from you guys, and that is we create buyer's guides for everything from these Ferraris right through to Ford Fiestas. So this channel may be a worthwhile subscribe for you. I'll leave that one up to you. Also, if you're getting value from this, you're enjoying this video, then hit that like button so others can find it as well. Anyway, next check for you, and that is around these wheel arches. 
I've had to practice this line, galvanic corrosion is what we see on these cars. It's not steel panels, so therefore it's not rust. However, it looks like rust, it's dealt with like rust, so it's pretty similar for all intents and purposes to rust. So effectively what you want to do is have a look for any bubbling on these wheel arches and if you do spot it, be really careful. Make sure that's brought into the negotiation because getting something finished back to OEM standard on these cars is going to be really quite pricey. Next up, carbon ceramic brakes were standard on the 458. Absolutely unbelievable performance absolutely unbelievable cost if you had to replace them. So again, have a look at them, make sure all looks okay there. Remember, it's not like a typical steel disc where we're gonna get that big lip around the edge to tell us it's worn. Instead, what tends to happen with these is they'll delaminate and start to look rough in texture. So if that's the case, they're probably getting tired, probably gonna need replaced soon. So bring that into the bargain, save yourself thousands of pounds. Now while we're down here, quick note on the suspension. It's not dissimilar to what they use on the Audi R8 and as we know that can sometimes have some problems. The fluid can leak out of them and then you stop losing that dampening effect. Now if you own one of these cars or you're having that problem, drop a comment in the comment section below and I can get you in touch with our supplier who can refurbish them for a fraction of the cost of buying new ones. Quick note on tyres, you'll hear us in all our buyer's guide, particularly on the pricier cars like this, saying make sure the tyres are okay, make sure they're not overly worn, because again, if you buy the car, you're gonna need to foot the bill for that. One additional check on the 458, however, and that's because the traction control system on these cars is really quite picky. If you fit the wrong size tires, you're gonna have a whole host of issues on your hands. So here are the correct tire sizes. Make sure that they're on the car that you're looking at, and if they're not, again, bring that into the bargain, negotiate a bit of money off, so you can buy yourself the correct tires. Now if it's a spider that you're looking at, just like this car, then you're going to want to be careful that the roof is all working okay. Now more often than not, if it's got a problem, it tends to be on the way down. So try putting that top up and down a couple of times and make sure nothing's sticking and you don't see anything untoward. Because again, really, really expensive if we start seeing problems there. Also, as these cars get a little bit older, we think about it, some of them are getting on for 10 years or beyond now. Some of the seals are starting to perish and you're getting a little bit of water ingress through the roof. Not a big deal, but if it's raining, you shouldn't have that problem in Scotland, it's always raining, so you can check this. But if not, then have a look at the interior, make sure there's no water marks or anything that would suggest that water is getting in. As we move on into the interior, I know you're dying to get out on the road and don't worry, we will stay tuned for when we take this for a quick rip on the road. But before we get to that, couple things to have a look at in here. Now, number one is that leather on the dashboard. It's absolutely beautiful, soft Italian leather. The problem is if you live in a hotter climate, that sun beating through the windscreen can take its toll on it. It can actually pull away altogether because it stretches the leather. So check that's not the case and also, check that it's not wrinkling, that tends to be a precursor to it coming away altogether. And again, getting that repaired back to factory standard, it's gonna be difficult and it's gonna be expensive. Now as for the rest of the issues, quite frankly, it's more fun to tell you about them on the road and it's a good excuse to get a go in this car. So let's go. So here we are, undoubtedly at the bit that you've been waiting for, getting the car out on the road, experiencing it for the first time, but don't get too carried away make sure you do these checks. Now we've opted here to use the big camera, the good quality camera for getting the outside shots. Uh, so apologies if the quality is a little bit down in here. We thought that was the right thing to do. So what do you need to look for? Well, that first affliction, sticky buttons on the interior of these Ferraris, right back to the 360 and even before, the buttons could get sticky. Check, that's not the case. Next up, the reverse camera. Make sure the reverse camera works if it's fitted. This seems to be a really common point that they always had to swap out. So make sure it's okay on the one that you're looking at. And I'm trying to rush here because we're about to hit the road in a minute and you're probably not gonna hear much at all from me. <laughs>
So this is where I've got a bit of an admission to make. And that is, with everything that was going on, I might have got a little bit carried away and forgot to film an outro for this video. So this voiceover is going to need to suffice. Apologies about that. So the Ferrari 458, an extremely significant car. It blends the end of the naturally aspirated engines with the introduction of new age tech like its double clutch gearbox. Really, it's no surprise that there were a few issues, but thankfully, they only seem to affect, really, the earliest of the cars. So how do we score it on a reliability leaderboard? Well, we're awarding the 458 an equally as significant 7.5 out of 10. A legend, a Ferrari, and a reliable Ferrari at that.